What's up everyone, it's Blipthis here. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This is my brand new travel vlogging camera that I'm gonna be using throughout my travels. And just like every review that I have, I don't go through the specs, okay? If you're looking for specs, there's tons of other videos on YouTube for that. We're gonna be focusing on the use case. Just an intro to you, I am a traveler who constantly is traveling, but I also do vlogging. You can also visit my other channel on Borders to check out most of my, my travel videos. But in this video, I wanna put the DJ Osmo Pocket 3 through the test of what it would be like using it as a travel vlogging camera. Okay, so if you're like me, you're in the market for something small, nimble, discreet so then when you travel vlog it doesn't feel like you're carrying such a big camera around and a lot of times when you do vlogging you know and you're doing something like this a lot of times you want something lightweight because your arm will eventually give out and especially when you're doing a lot of walking and a lot of talking having something just as small as this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is such a game changer for the vlogging game I've been using this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 for about two months now and I got a good sense of what it can do and what it can't do so I'm pretty excited to start this review and show you guys what it's all about let's start So in this video, I really want to focus on the features that I was looking for in a camera for my next travel vlogging camera. So if you guys probably saw my old video where I was vlogging with the Insta360 camera, that sort of didn't work out for me. Now that I wasn't for, in the market for another video camera, I wanted to make sure there are some boxes that was checked with them. So one of them had to be video quality. It just had to look good in order to grow a channel. Two. It had to be small and lightweight enough so then I, when I go travel, I don't have fatigue in my arm or a, you know cramps or whatever. It just had to be small and nimble. And third, it had to be good in low light. Those were my three main criteria for the next camera. And I gotta say, this one hits all the marks. One of my favorite features of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is that you can set the settings so that when you flip the screen, it starts recording right away, which is a great feature. And this is a feature that you can turn on within the settings. This is a very small and nimble camera here. And you can see it just fits the palm of my hand. That's how small it is. It's supposed to be pocketable. You can see here that I've already dropped my camera once or <laughs> twice. That was because I didn't have my wrist wire thing here on. You know, you just put in your wrist there and you lock it and if it drops, it goes like that. So if I had this, it wouldn't have dropped. But you know what? It suffered a fall from about this height down to the ground twice. So uh, durability wise, I think it's pretty durable. You can see, got a crow going on over there. And you can see, you know, I have it dented here. I have it dented on the camera here as well. And I also have it dented here. So, and also the great thing about this is the case I feel is actually good enough. In this case, you can see that they have placements for the wide angle lens. If you bought the creator's package, you'll get a wide angle lens included with the package. Uh, and also a black pro mist filter, which you have to buy separately. But I'll talk about it later. I didn't buy the wide angle lens separately because I don't think there's a need for it. And I'll tell you why soon. Okay, so I wanna give you a rundown of how I have this Rode Wireless Mi microphone connected to this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera. What I have here is the Ulanzi PT20 bracket. And then what you do is you attach the microphone the receiver onto it you just clip it there and all you do is the USB-C to the USB-C connector in the back there and just to check make sure that your microphone is working you look at that meter bouncing up there and then you know you're good to go something to note here as well is that let's say if you don't want to go out and purchase this bracket here and you just want to hand hold this thing but don't know where to put the receiver what you can do is you can pull this out and just hang it onto this wrist strap here. There you go. That's how you would vlog and keep 
the microphone attached. Okay, so I'm gonna do a vlogging test, but I just wanted to show you here that I have everything on auto and the color, I have it at normal color, not any of the other profiles like HLG and D-Log. Normally, if you're a person who likes to color grade, I recommend shooting in D-Log M and that will allow you the most leeway in uh, color correction. Okay, so here is a vlogging test using follow mode with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And I'm walking normally, and you can see with my arm extension, that's about, this is far out. This is far out, this is the view you'll get as a far out shot, which you can kind of see is like a, like a wide angle lens. But to be honest, if you're vlogging like this, for a long time, it's gonna, your arm is gonna give up. So normally people like to vlog around this. So you can expect this sort of field of view if you're vlogging on the street, traveling, and you know, this is it. Okay, so this is a walking shot. I have it, the camera facing forward to me, and I'm just walking normally without any slow motion. Actually, matter of fact, I'm gonna run across the street right now and you can see how it performs. How'd that do? And with the triple click of the joystick button, what happens is the camera will flip around just like you just did right there. So you can easily talk and walk and just pretend that, oh my gosh, look how they're interesting plants over here. And you flip it, boom. Look at these plants, they're so interesting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna test the internal microphones of this camera. How does the microphone sound on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3? I'm standing very close to traffic here. It sounds pretty noisy. I'm in an area where there's a lot of people here and you, I don't know if you can hear, there's a helicopter going off in the background. I'm gonna take the opportunity here to show you what it's like to pan with the joystick. Okay, so what you can do with this camera is you can move the joystick and it will pan across, but it doesn't do a full 360. Just see. See, it stops right about there. I'm going to stick the microphone back into this camera now so we can have much better audio. Hopefully you got a good sense of what the audio will be like if you just took this out of the box and start recording with it using its internal microphone, no accessories whatsoever, and just start recording. Okie dokie, here we are, back again. Um, okay, so I, what I wanted to show you guys is that you can actually get a wider field of view if you set this camera into tilt lock position. All you need to do is first get yourself one of these little mini tripod things. And if it has an extendable handle, yeah, that's even better. This one here, I'll link the product down below in the description if you want this. I made a review on this as well. It's really great. And you just attach it to the bottom of the DJI right there, okay? Obviously, to get a bigger field of view, or wider field of view, is you need to physically have the camera further away from you, right? The case is that you need to change it to have it on tilt lock mode. Go into the settings, hit this gimbal, button go to tilt lock all right once it's on tilt lock you'll see that anytime that I tilt the camera it'll stay on its locked horizon it's tilt mode you'll just frame yourself in the scene here once you have it tilted frame yourself okay and you can see that the camera is stuck onto me even at even while I have it on this tilt mode and the camera is at maximum distance from you. Also my arm is in a very comfortable position. You can see that. Not like extended out like this, just like this. And so this is the field of view that you get. You can see it's almost like a wide angle lens camera without the distortion on the side, just like that. And so if I want an even wider field of view, I will just extend it out. And that is about 10 inches extended away from me and you can see if i vlog like this you see i don't take up a lot of space with this extended handle like that and this is the field of view i get this is pretty great now let's just say for instance you don't want to invest in a tr little tripod as well and you just want to go handheld what's the field of view can you get with this so let me just detach this here we go 
So I have it handheld. You can see in the camera here how it looks like. And this is the field of view you can get. Is that a bigger improvement? So let's just uh, do a test here. Up, down, up, down, up, down, you get it. Okay, so here is a camera test walking under street lamps for both cameras here. I have the ZVE-10 here on the left side and myself on the DJI Pocket on the right side. Okay, this is with the kit lens on the ZV-10. And everything is an auto. Everything is on auto settings on both cameras. What do you guys think? What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going into that field right behind me here where there's literally no light and test it out as well. Okay, so I am now standing literally in the dark. Okay, there's the moon behind me. I'm standing right in the dark and it looks like the DJI is showing at least a little bit of picture and the ZV-E10 on the kit lens is completely black from what I can see on the screen here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch the kit lens out for the 11 mil 1.8 lens and see how that compares to the DJI Pocket. Okay, so here's a comparison. So on the Sony ZV-E10, I had the 11 mil 1.8 now, and then on and the DJI Pocket has auto. And it looks like the Sony has brightened up quite a bit. I can see stuff. That's quite nice. That's a car light. We're back here, same spot. There's the moon. The moon is a lot brighter now on the ZV-E10. And it looks like I'm getting a lot more light in. This is great. Okay, so now this is the street lamp test. And you can see that the Sony has definitely let in a little bit more light. It's a lot brighter. The DJI Pocket is performing quite well. Yeah, what do you guys think? I hope you guys enjoyed that review. I just want to wrap up the points of my pros and cons. First, pros. There's a lot more pros than there are cons, and I really, really do recommend this camera. It's amazing, to be honest. It's amazing. Pros. Fast startup. Great quality videos. Three, great low light, as you can see. Four, compact, light, easy to carry five the gimbal stabilization is a crazy amazing just like uh, i showed you in that running test there it has active tracking meaning it could track your face anywhere you want to go all right let me show you right now actually real quickly it's compatible with the rode microphone which is great okay the best part also as well is i gotta say is when you connect it with a phone wirelessly, you can control the camera easily. And it's it's sometimes there is some lag to it, but it's not as laggy as most cameras out there. And it's great. So you kind of shoot remotely with your phone. Quick charging. Let me just show you on the screen right now. Quick charging. So it took me about 15 minutes to charge up to a certain amount, as you can see in the video there. Internal microphone, really great. Fun to use. All right, this camera is absolutely fun to use. So simple, so intuitive. And it's easy to use and capture a lot of experiences in most situations. So I think this is really, truly the ultimate vlogging camera. Now, cons, and it, there's not many of them and they're not even deal breakers, okay? One, non-removable battery. Yeah, they need to have a removable battery. Two, it's not weatherproof. So don't make, make sure you, you don't treat this as an action camera, like an action camera where you're swimming with it and all that other stuff. Even though that I said the camera is durable, it feels delicate in the hand. So you do need to be careful because I mean, the screen could probably pop off or whatever it is. There's a lot of parts sticking out from it. So that's one thing. Another thing is it needs a fast micro SD card. Okay, so make sure you buy the professional versions the extreme versions because if you don't you'll get a pop-up that shows that it is too slow the card is too slow with the camera at the beginning it takes a little bit of use getting used to with the gimbal especially if you never used the gimbal before sometimes if you don't have it in the correct uh, gimbal mode 
you might think that it's just lagging. So if you get used to the three modes that they have on there and to figure out which style you like the most, then the learning curve just starts going down. So you'll get really used to it. The last one is zoom capabilities, okay? Because this is a fixed lens, the zoom that you're gonna get on this camera is technically just a digital crop, okay? So don't expect good zoom on it. If you want good zoom, you're gonna need a point and shoot camera or something that has an interchangeable lens that you can zoom. And so that's it. That's all I really wanted to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it really helped you. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Peace out.